We all know about China's house in the sky, the Tian Gong space station. But far fewer people realize that the country is planning to build something much bigger. Back in 2022, China revealed that the Tian Gong space station would play a big role in its ambitious space-based solar power project. The idea was to use Tian Gong as a testing platform for high-voltage electrical systems, with the station's robotic arms helping try out how modules for a space-based solar power setup could be assembled in orbit. Yang Hong, the station's chief designer, talked about this during the China Space Conference. Once the test system is ready, it'll head off into its own orbit, unfold its solar arrays, and start checking how well it can generate, convert, and transmit power. The goal is to push forward key technologies, gather real, on-orbit data, and ultimately support China's broader goals of carbon peaking and carbon neutrality. Little did we know at the time that this was just the beginning. Fast forward to October 2024, and suddenly the headlines are full of China's bold plans to build full-fledged space-based solar power stations. It's turning into something much bigger than anyone expected. So what is space-based solar power? Imagine a huge, kilometer-wide solar array orbiting Earth, soaking up limitless sunlight and sending that energy back down to us, day and night, without clouds, weather, or nighttime getting in the way. Unlike solar farms on the ground, which deal with rain, dust, or just plain darkness, a station in space gets constant, uninterrupted sunshine. It captures unfiltered solar radiation far more efficiently than converting that energy into microwaves and beams it to receiving stations on Earth, where it's turned back into electricity and fed into the grid. To put it simply, space-based solar power, or a space solar power station, is the idea of using satellites to collect solar energy in space and wirelessly transmit it down to Earth. Because they sit above the atmosphere, these satellites can gather nearly continuous sunlight, making them much more efficient than anything we can build on the ground. Most SBSP concepts split the system into two parts, the space segment and the ground segment. The space segment involves massive solar-collecting satellites placed in geostationary or other high orbits. From there, they can stay fixed over one area, gather energy, convert it into microwaves or laser beams, and send it down to Earth. This wireless transmission completely sidesteps the need for long-distance power lines in space or on land. The ground segment is all about receiving and converting that beamed-down power. It includes large antenna arrays that catch the incoming microwaves and transform them into electricity that can be fed into a national grid. Alongside these antennas are the control and management facilities that keep everything running safely and reliably, from satellite operations to power delivery. If SBSP becomes a reality, it could offer a continuous, renewable, and scalable energy source, one that could significantly reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and reshape how we think about clean energy. Chinese space industry veteran Long Lehao didn't hold back when talking about space-based solar power. We're working on this project right now, he said. It's as significant as lifting the entire Three Gorges Dam and placing it in geostationary orbit, 36,000 kilometers above Earth. It's an incredible project to look forward to. He went even further with the scale of the idea. Imagine installing a solar array a full kilometer wide along the 36,000 kilometer geostationary orbit the amount of energy it could collect in just one year would be equal to all the oil we could ever extract from Earth. In his recent talks over the past few years, Long Lehao has often linked the space-based solar power project with China's next-generation heavy-lift rockets, the Long March 5, Long March 10, and the massive Long March 9. These vehicles, he suggests, will be key to getting the huge components of a space solar power station into orbit. If realized, these stations could completely reshape how we generate power. Long has compared each one to putting the Three Gorges Dam into space, a striking comparison considering the dam already produces around 100 billion kilowatt hours of electricity every year. It's an energy mega project on Earth and the idea of recreating that level of output in orbit shows just how transformative space-based solar power could be. Because of geography, we've basically hit the limits of what we can build on Earth. There's no room, practically or politically, for more Three Gorges-scale dams. 
we can't just blanket entire regions with solar panels or pack offshore shipping lanes with wind turbines to keep up with rising energy demands. Nuclear fission and fusion can help, but those plants usually need to be built far from major cities due to safety concerns and require reliable sources of cooling water. All of this makes scaling up terrestrial energy infrastructure harder than it sounds. And that's where space-based solar power comes in. Since SBSP can collect energy far more efficiently, the ground facilities needed to receive that power can be much smaller than the sprawling land requirements of wind or solar farms. Plus, space gives us something Earth never will, limitless room. As long as we can launch the hardware, we can add more power stations in different high orbits, each hovering over a chosen region and delivering clean, steady electricity. Beyond Earth, SBSP could also play a huge role in future space exploration. It could power lunar bases, especially those focused on mining valuable resources, and support missions deeper into the solar system, where sunlight is too weak for traditional solar panels. The China Academy of Space Technology, CAST, the state-owned spacecraft manufacturer behind Tiangong's modules, has already laid out a roadmap for its space-based solar power ambitions. CAST says it plans to run a space high-voltage transfer and wireless power transmission experiment in low Earth orbit in 2028. Just two years later, in 2030, China aims to deploy a 1-megawatt station in geostationary orbit at 36,000 kilometers, assembling it in space before it begins beaming power back to Earth. By 2035, the plan is to scale the system up to 10 megawatts, showing it can support meaningful energy production. And by 2050, the goal is a fully commercial solar power plant in space generating 2 gigawatts, using a kilometer-wide antenna and a massive solar array assembled entirely in orbit. Details on how these stations will actually be assembled and launched are still limited, but based on current and upcoming rockets, we can make some informed guesses. For the 2028 Low Earth Orbit demo, the most likely launch vehicle is the Long March 5B. It's reliable, it can lift 25,000 kilograms, and its huge payload fairing offers plenty of room for bulky power transmission hardware. Looking ahead to the 2030 geostationary demonstration, the mission could fly on the upcoming Long March 10. While its exact capabilities haven't been officially published, it's expected to deliver 30,000 to 40,000 kilograms to geostationary transfer orbit, especially if paired with a large fairing similar to the Long March 5s, something China already plans to use for assembling lunar space stations. For the long-term rollout of full-scale stations, Long Lahao has repeatedly emphasized the role of the Long March 9. This super-heavy rocket, still in development, is designed to haul 150,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, or 54,000 kilograms to a lunar transfer orbit, exactly the kind of lifting power needed for kilometer-sized solar arrays and antennas. Despite its enormous size, 114 meters tall and 10.6 meters wide, the Long March 9 is expected to be cost-efficient thanks to a reusable first stage powered by 30 YF215 engines, with possible second stage reuse also under study. Plans like this from China are a big reason the United States worries it may lose the strategic edge that has long supported modern military power. A new, wide-ranging report urges Congress to act quickly as China speeds up its push to dominate space. In its 745-page annual report to Congress, set to be released on November 18, the bipartisan U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission delivers a blunt look at Beijing's drive to become the world's leading space power. The commission, created by Congress in 2000, has spent decades watching China's economic and military rise. This year's report says China's space program has reached a new level in speed, scale, and ambition, something U.S. military leaders have described as mind-boggling. Space Force General Chance Saltzman used that phrase in his testimony to the commission. He outlined how quickly China is building space-based systems meant to give Beijing an advantage both in peacetime and during a potential conflict. The report highlights his warning that China's fast-growing military space arsenal could threaten America's ability to rely on satellites for targeting, communications, and surveillance, especially in the Western Pacific, 
where U.S. forces are spread out and depend heavily on strong, resilient networks. China's rapid advancements in space capabilities should concern every American, the Commission writes. It also stresses that U.S. society leans heavily on satellites for GPS, banking, weather forecasts, and even the power grid, dependencies many people don't fully realize. A major point in the report is China's major advantage from its fully integrated, dual-use space program. Commercial companies, state-owned firms, and the military all operate as one ecosystem, allowing the People's Liberation Army to quickly turn commercial breakthroughs into military tools. This is most visible in China's counter-space technologies, systems that can disrupt or disable satellites. U.S. commanders worry these tools could be used to blind or confuse the U.S. at the start of a crisis. The report also notes that Washington avoided building offensive space weapons for years to avoid being accused of militarizing space. But that restraint is fading as China openly treats space as a warfighting domain. The report points to the Space Force's March 2025 warfighting framework, which makes space superiority central to U.S. forecast planning, including offensive and defensive operations to protect key satellites. China's progress is broad and fast, the report says. Beijing has increased commercial launch capacity, begun deploying early phases of mega-constellations, and built a global network of ground stations, all designed for easy military use. China is also investing in quantum communication satellites, reusable space planes, space-based computing and AI, nuclear thermal propulsion for faster deep space travel, and even space-based solar power that could beam energy to Earth. The Commission estimates that China has built this state-directed, commercial ecosystem in about a decade. Many of the companies look private, but follow government priorities, giving China a fast-scaling industrial base tightly aligned with strategic goals. The report calls this a formidable technological, economic, and geostrategic challenge to the United States. According to the Commission, China's long-term objective is to shape international space rules, set global standards, and eventually overtake the United States as the world's leading space power. China is carrying out a full, government-wide strategy to become the world's leading space power. Beijing sees space as a warfighting domain, and it aims to achieve space superiority as a key part of its larger plan to dominate information, something it believes is essential to controlling the battle space and gaining the upper hand in future conflicts. To support this goal, China has been rapidly developing and deploying advanced capabilities across all parts of its space sector, civil, military, and commercial. This includes major progress in launch systems, satellite networks, and global ground infrastructure. All of this is steadily narrowing the gap between the United States and China in the strategic competition for space. So where does that leave us? Are we already in a conflict with China? Some experts say yes, at least in the sense of ongoing, quiet competition in space and cyberspace. That's why U.S. Space Force leaders talk openly about preparing for future battles above Earth. But it may not look like dramatic satellite dogfights. China's approach could be subtler, focused on undermining systems, gaining information advantages, and pulling other countries into its orbit through attractive, affordable, and widely adopted technologies. How can the United States and its partners counter the growing appeal of China's space and tech ecosystem?